Hello. Now we're going to talk about stock valuation methods. In particular, we're going to talk about the discounted dividend model, which comes in two forms, a constant growth and a supernormal growth. The model basically says that if you own a company, the value of this company should be the sum of all the dividends that are coming in the future discounted at a particular uh, or relevant rate. At this case, we call it K. So dividend 1 all the way to infinity, all those dividends are yours for the owner of a share, therefore the sum of all those would be the price. Now, if we assume that these dividends are going to grow at a constant rate, and that great rate could be zero, um, things get a lot easier because dividend 1 is nothing but dividend at time 0 times 1 plus G, the growth rate. And actually, if the growth is always constant, dividend 2 will be, well, dividend 0 times 1 plus g to the second, or dividend 1, which we will calculate it, times 1 plus g. So in essence, we can calculate what dividend t will be at any time, which is basically a function of the dividend that was just paid. And given that we already know what was just paid, these things make it easy. Now, we can go back to the formula, the long formula, and kind of make it converge to on something very simple which is the price at time zero is going to be the dividend of the next period, the next year, over k minus g. Sometimes we're, we call this r, this required return, return. So what happens if g is bigger than k? Well, we're going to get a negative stock price and this does not make any sense so don't forget this on exam day, don't give me a negative stock price the constant growth model can only be used if k is bigger than g and g is expected to be constant forever so let's take a look at a typical example uh, of a problem with constant growth so we have a company, Night Gallery, that just paid a dividend of two dollars and expected to grow at 6% per year, constant. That's the magic rate. Risk-free rate is 7%, return on the market is 12%, and the beta is 1.2%. You might be asking yourself, well, what does beta have to do with this? Well, to calculate the stock price, we're going to have to first calculate the required return on Night Gallery. So, if these are the data, return on the market, RF and beta are that, the required return on the company is going to be 7 plus 12 minus 7 times 1.2. This is basically from the CAPM, so don't forget this. Um, so 13% is our required return. Remember that RM is not the same as RPM or the risk premium or the market risk premium. So be careful on what information you're given. So then, what do we need to do? Well, if we know that the dividend that first paid was $2 and it's expected to grow at 6%, well, we can calculate the dividend at year 1. It's going to be basically 2 times 1.06 equals 2.12. Now, 2.12 times 1.06 should give you this 2.247. And again, this number times 1.06 will give you this 2.03. So the idea is to discount this dividend at a rate of 13%. So they compounded to the right at 6% and they're discounted at 13%. What is the price of Night Gallery? Very simply stated, dividend 1, right? The 2.12 that we just calculated over R or K in this time. 13% minus the 6%. 212 divided by 0.07, the price is $30.29. What would be, for example, the expected market price of the stock one year from now? So we're not looking for P0, we're actually looking for P1. Well, that's not that complicated. The formula can be very easily adjusted. P1 is going to be dividend 2 over k minus g or r minus g in this case we had already calculated the 2.247 
the growth rate and here and the R doesn't change so the price jumps to 32.10 we can also have we could have found it just by multiplying P0 times 1.06 what would be the dividend yield of this company the dividend yield would have been well the dividend divided by the price which is a 7% and the capital gains yield would have been the price at 1 minus the price at 0 the gain that we made divided by the price at 0 a 6% and remember what we talked about the capital gain and the uh, dividend yield or the uh, coupon yield both of them when they add them up give you the required return of 13% so how do you make this 13%? 7 of it come from the dividend in this company and 6% from a price appreciation very similar to what we saw on bonds what would happen if the growth rate is zero? we can easily account for that in this case well the dividend will be constant and it will be R minus zero it becomes similar to the valuation of a uh, perpetuity two dollars divided by 0.13 the price would become 15.38 you see how much it dropped how important growth is for the price of a share supernormal growth we run into this uh, when we look at the growth rate of companies and we see that many times well they're expected to grow at 20 percent rate for the next five years 25 percent for the next five years 15 percent for the next 10 years etc and those rates are higher than our um, K or our R and when we do that we get negative prices so what can we do well we could acknowledge that companies are going to grow and make a little adjustment so let's assume this the same company that was going to grow very rapidly at 30 percent for three years before getting to this long run growth of six percent so we have in the same example just given it three years of very very high growth can use the normal model like we just did so but knowing that the growth does become constant after three years we can make the following adjustment so we're going to start laying out the problem and knowing that our two dollar dividend is going to grow at 30 percent from zero to one then another 30 percent then another 30 percent and after that is going to be constant so can we calculate the dividend in year one of course we can can we calculate dividend in year two of course we can dividend in three and even dividend in four we can very easily do it so let's take a look at it and make sure that you can do these numbers on your own. 2 times 30%, 1 plus 30 is um, 2.6. The 2.6 times 1.3 gives you this number. And this number at another 30% growth will give you this 4.39. Again, make sure that you can do it. Pause the video and do these calculations yourself here comes the first trick of this given that the growth becomes constant after year 3 we could calculate P3 because after year 3 growth becomes 6% right so we take the dividend at 4 this number here and we divide it by 13 minus 6% 0.13 minus 0 0.06 and this gives us a price of this company night gallery in year three so in three years we would pay or we would get 66 dollars for night gallery but that's in three years that's not the price now right so how can we get the price today well we just need to acknowledge that in three years we're going to get the price that we can sell the share for we can also get this dividend three we can also get this dividend of year two and the dividend of year one all these ones are going to be ours 
this dividend a year two is not because that was I mean uh, dividend a year zero here is not because it was paid already so what cash flows does a, an owner of this company uh, entitled to next year's dividend 2.6 year 2 dividend 3.3 year 3 dividend 4.3 and at that point in time we can sell the share so we should get 66.54 now we can't just add them we need to bring them back calculate the present value so here I want you to take your Excel and do a present value okay PV equals a rate what rate the rate is going to be 13 percent the future value is going to be 66 how many periods one two three payment zero and bring this back to time zero the number the answer should be 46 this 3.045 here that I'm highlighting is basically the present value of three years of this point port point three nine four this three point thirty eight if you bring them at today's dollars should be two point sixty four this two point six should be two point three so make sure that you can do this and if you have any questions ask me in class this is all present value calculations now what do we do we add this two point three this 2.6 this 3.045 and this 46 dollars and we get the price of 54.107 this is the price of the company pause this video go back to it make sure you can do every calculation here all these calculations are very very simple you just need to do a lot of them and you need to do them in order So I'll leave you with an example so we can work in, work it in class. Here we have a company, and this is a typical exam question. Um, going through an accelerated growth period. Last dividend was 1.2. The CFO expects that the dividend growth rate will be 30% for the next five years, after which dividends are expected to grow at a rate of 3% forever. You search Yahoo Finance and you found the VEDA. Additionally, you know that the risk-free rate is 6% and the return on the market is 10%. What would be the current stock price for Ramirez company? Remember, at this point, you should start using the CAPM, in particular the SML, to calculate the required rate. Follow the example before and you should be able to come up with the answer. We'll work on this in our class.